the style of the room behind me is maximalism. Of course, I do know that minimalism is in vogue, not only in home decoration, but also in lifestyle that people are interested in essentialism, minimalism, simplicity. You know, we want to declutter our homes and our lives. We want to avoid hurry. Of course, that trend runs parallel to an opposite trend, which is devoted to consumerism, which is uh, living on the edge of burnout. And I don't quite know how those two things go together. Obviously, the one is more connected to the monastic way of life. And really behind me, I should have just a candle and a few books and blank walls or something like that. It's all modeled on this idea of monastic poverty, but strangely, these people who pursue that kind of thing aren't poor at all. In fact, if you've ever been to somebody's house who is poor, who can't really put things into their rooms, uh, it's a little bit different. It's not quite as aesthetically pleasing, let's say. Now, monastic poverty had a point, and perhaps we shouldn't talk about poverty, but rather simplicity, because probably none of us are prepared to take the vow of poverty which um, the monks took, which was really a vow to no private ownership. But it had a point. There is a reason why they were doing that, and the reason was to fill their lives with something else. They remove things from their lives in order to fill them with something else. Now, what they filled them with was study and prayer. And they filled them with study and prayer because what they were interested in was pursuing God, getting closer to God. And study and prayer were the two things that they knew would help them do that. And that is for Benedictines. Here's my rule of St. Benedict. Two of the three things that you always see them doing, work, study, and pray. Hey everybody, welcome to the Sanctus Forum. I am Michael Stewart Robb. That's me. I'm better known as Mike, and here on this Sanctus Forum we talk about books and everyday spirituality, and the book that we have been talking about for the Lenten season is The Rule of St. Benedict. Lenten season means that uh, this week, next week, that's going to be it for videos on The Rule of St. Benedict. And I realize there's lots more topics that we could talk about. Uh, I don't know if we should keep talking about them. Maybe later on in the year we'll keep talking about them. But lots of really good things to, to discuss in this rule and how it would could enter into everyday spirituality for people like us, people like me, who aren't monks. Now today I wanted to talk a bit about poverty, uh, although I think we really should talk about simplicity instead because that is more of a goal that um, the rest of us can, can achieve. And there's a few things that I think we should say about uh, simplicity and its value and why we can uh, or should um, try to find some appropriation of simplicity for our lives. Uh, the first is this, and that's that managing things well is difficult. And if you have more things, that becomes even more difficult to manage them well. Of course, you can own them, but owning is different than actually putting them to use for good. And that's why all of us should be careful about what sorts of things we are actually going to keep within the sphere of our influence, or as Dallas Willard would say, within our kingdom. What are we going to retain control over? Because all those things ought to be, ought to be managed well. They ought to be put to good use. And if they're not, um, maybe we shouldn't be owning them. And that's where simplicity comes in because one of the good things about keeping the number of things that you are trying to manage well to a reasonable limit is that it frees you for other things. It frees you for a life. So for the Benedictines, it frees you for a life of work, study, and pray. And work here would be creative work, doing good things, um, bringing about good into this world. And, uh, and then ultimately, for the Benedictines, the idea is that that would uh, help 
us pursue God and come to know God better. And that's where for all of us, if we have too much that we're um, trying to take care of, then there's not going to be a whole lot of time left for us to um, pursue God, to be with God, to do the sorts of things that would help us do that. Now, of course, you can do that through the managing of things, and you can do it through work of various kinds. And that's one of the things that perhaps Benedict didn't quite understand, that there were very important non-monastic callings in this world. But, you know, we'll let him have his have his day. Uh, but nevertheless, there are certain things he did recognize that if you don't find some way to do some study and some prayer, probably you're not going to have a very easy time of getting to know God and to pursue and find him. Now, when you start to get into this, and start to find simplicity in your life, and you realize, boy, things are, are pretty complicated, then it's, this is a kind of obvious thing, but it's sometimes the obvious things are needed to be said. The big changes is where you're going to see the biggest differences, okay? So with respect to the house that you live in, whether it's an apartment or whether you own multiple homes, uh, or the things that you furnish it with, all of these things are going to uh, eat up your time and your energy if you're going to manage them well. I mean, you can manage them poorly and that's probably a whole lot easier, but to manage them well is going to take time. And so making changes there is really going to, is where you're going to see the most fruit. Um, but not just where you live and uh, the things you furnish uh, your houses with, but, but also things like your career, the number of hours that you're going to work, the type of work that you're going to do. Changing these things or choosing one versus the other is going to leave you with more time to do, well, monastic, in monastic words, study and prayer. But then there's also things like experiences. What sorts of experiences do you want to have this year? Um, and you know, it's so hard to not be to to be um, general enough that I can talk with a a lot of different people because I don't quite know the situations that you're that you're in there. But certain experiences that you might decide are important for you are going to limit your ability to do other sorts of things. For example, it might limit your ability to go regularly to a worship service, uh, sort of a Sunday worship service as is traditional for, for most people. Um, you know, so you're going to have to sort of make decisions about where you're going to simplify um, and what is the right kind of, of balance for you so that you can fill your life with other things because there really is a point to this simplicity stuff and it's not just aesthetic it actually gives us freedom to do other things and finally the third thing that i think we can say about simplicity and also taking yet another step towards um, pursuing it is give things away find ways to give things away sensibly i mean don't just dump it all out on the street in front of your house, find ways to give things away sem sensibly. There's a saying, I'm not quite sure who it's from, but if God can get it through you, he will get it to you. If God can get it through you, he will get it to you. So think about your life as a, as a conduit and that things kind of come into your ownership and a number of those things are really meant to be passed on to other people. And of course, money is one of those things that you can pass on to other people, but also belongings of various kinds can be just passed on to other people because possibly you're not able to manage them well, you're not able to put them to good use, and so why not just pass them on to somebody who actually can use them and put them, um, yeah can use them. Well, I said I was going to do a bit of a digital cloister up until Easter, and I still am doing that. I do wonder if anybody else is attempting something similar. In fact, let me show you something. 
when I was in Nashville, I got this book from a church that I was visiting, The Digital Fast by Dr. Darren Whitehead. I don't quite know how you can get this book, um, but that might be helpful. 40 Days to Detox Your Mind and Reclaim What Matters Most. I haven't read it, so I don't know if I can recommend it, but it is uh, along this topic of a, of a digital cloister, and I was glad to see that they were doing this together as a, as a church. Um, just a, another reminder that we do have a documentary, at least a trailer that you can watch. The documentary is called Alone Together and talks about my time and that of other people being together on a retreat without our phones and just focusing on God there and what happens out of that. You'll see that over at sanctus.institute slash alone together. Check out the trailer and see if there isn't a way that you can view the documentary. But until next time, next week, probably. Bye. Oh, and if you want to watch the documentary trailer, I think it's here or maybe here.